Meet the 15-year-old entrepreneur who's saving the environment one glass of lemonade at a time. Get the top ways to empower women entrepreneurs. And learn how to make each of your team members feel valued and important. All that and more on this episode of the Business Life and Coffee Show. Let's get to it. Hey, thanks for tuning in, YouTube. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell. I don't want you to miss an upcoming episode or segment from what we have going on in this channel. So subscribe, hit the bell. Let's be friends and let's get to the show. You're tuned to the Business Life and Coffee Show, a virtual mentorship podcast for early stage entrepreneurs and busy professionals who care deeply about finding a healthy balance between work and the rest of our lives. If this is your first time listening to the show, welcome. And if this is your second, third, fifth, 400th time listening to the show, welcome back. We're so glad that you're a faithful listener. As always, this episode is brought to you by Jumpstart HR, which is an HR outsourcing provider for small businesses and startups. And now let's get to the show. So, hey, thanks for tuning in on the first episode in Women's History Month. And if you are curious like me, you're probably wondering the history behind Women's History Month. And of course, Wikipedia is always there to tell you. And so uh, on Wikipedia, I found that Women's History Month actually goes back to uh, International Women's Day in 1911. It went from being a day to a week and to a month. Uh, it was in 1987 that uh, Congress passed uh, a law saying that, or a designation, um, that March 1987 was Women's History Month. Interesting thing is that between 1988 and 1994, Congress passed additional resolutions requesting and authorizing the president to proclaim March of each year as Women's History Month. Since 1988, though, U.S. presidents have issued annual proclamations designating the month of March as Women's History Month. I don't know about you, and maybe I'm reading this wrong, maybe I don't know the history behind it, but it just it's weird to me that there has to be an annual proclamation for uh, Women's History Month as opposed to it just being a thing that we do and something that we celebrate. So I'm not sure about that. Call your local congressmen, uh, call your lawmakers, see what they think about that. And uh, maybe we can work together to make Women's History Month a standing thing. Because what happens if someone forgets, if a president forgets to make the annual announcement? So that is our fun fact uh, for today. We've got a great show. We're going to talk about um, this this entrepreneur, this young lady who is making lemonade and crushing it, uh, pun intended, uh, in Austin, as well as some tips to empower women entrepreneurs, other things. But how are you doing? How's your week going? You're probably listening to this early on in the week. So are you up to a great start? If you're listening to this at the end of the week, uh, how did your week go? I'd love to hear from you. Send me a message on Instagram or Twitter, and my handle is at Joey V Price HR. Let's get into Mama I Made It. Mama I Made It is our weekly spotlight on entrepreneurs and change agents across the country. And this week's spotlight goes to Michaela Ulmer. She's the CEO of Me and the Bees Lemonade. And I just want to shout her out because A, this is Women's History Month, and B, I just want to show you how cool it is when you solve problems and you are known as a change agent and you're doing something in an innovative way. So there was an article on Michaela, and this article comes from NBC News. Uh, It was published at the end of February. And it said that when most 15 year olds are out at the movies, playing video games or listening to music, Michaela Ulmer of Austin is focusing on building her empire. Now, I don't know about you, but at 15 year old, the only empire I was building something in a video game for sure 
uh, because I wasn't I wasn't business minded. I wasn't business oriented. But with Michaela, what she has going on, her company, Me and the Bees Lemonade, she actually started this when she was four years old. So not only is Michaela younger than I am, she's actually been in business longer than I have. She has been in business for at least 11 years, and I am just barely uh, crossing the decade mark uh, at nine years. But anyway, Michaela is the CEO of Me and the Bees Lemonade, a business she started at age four after her family encouraged her to enter a local youth business competition. So quick plug right there for youth business competition. You never know, you could be getting a really great, not only a really great business idea from participating, but you could send someone on the path to entrepreneurship. But anyway, while she was thinking about what type of business to launch, she got stung by bees. (laughs) She got stung twice. And at first she was scared, but then her fright turned to fascination. When Michaela learned about the vital role bees play in the ecosystem, that's when she decided to do something that would help save honeybees, sell lemonade sweetened with local honey, and donate a percentage of the profits from sales to a local and international organizations fighting to save honeybees. Her special rep- recipe for flaxseed lemonade came from her great grandmother, Helen. Shout out to you, Michaela, for not only uh, being a young entrepreneur, a uh, woman entrepreneur that is worthy of being celebrated, but also someone who's helping the environment. I don't really know the impact uh, that bees have on our uh, ecosystem and on our crops and on our diet or anything like that. But I've seen a lot of information out there. If you're knowledgeable about the topic and you want to come on the show, uh, I'd be interested in having you on to to talk about uh, this during our coffee shop Q&A segment. But Michaela, you're doing great things. You're crushing it. You uh, were on Shark Tank. I can't believe it. You were on Shark Tank and you got 60,000 from Damon John. That's pretty cool. And then you spoke at Entrepreneurial Summit's and you were even introduced to President Barack Obama. That's super fascinating. Uh, But if you want Me and the Bees, you can check it out. It's in 1,500 stores nationwide, including Whole Foods, Wegmans, and the Fresh Market, along with a growing number of restaurants, food trailers, and natural food delivery companies. So Michaela is in business to serve, and she's in business to preserve. Serve you, the customer, and preserve the environment and help the bees. So Michaela, you are this week's Mama I Made It, and we are so excited for you and your future as an entrepreneur, whether you continue to work in lemonade or you start a nonprofit or philanthropy or whatever, I have a strong chance that you are going to be a lifetime leader and I couldn't be more excited about what that's going to mean for our future. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Jumpstart HR is changing the face of the HR industry with their outsourcing, project consulting, and phone support. Enabling startups and small businesses to outsource their HR needs from anywhere in the U.S., from new business and legal compliance to employee performance management and outplacement services. Within the business community, Jumpstart HR is a trusted and reliable service. In fact, companies like Forbes, HR.com, and Inc. Magazine have all featured Jumpstart HR for their easy-to-use hourly, monthly, and on-call support that is tailored specifically to each client's needs. This saves clients like you a lot of time and money. To learn more, schedule your free HR evaluation today at jumpstart-hr.com slash contact. All right, and we are back to the Business Life and Coffee show. We are in a segment called While You Were Working. And while you are working, we focus our attention on some articles, topics, things that are happening that you may have missed. Why? Because you were working. And this week's article is five ways to empower female entrepreneurs. It's found on thriveglobal.com and it 
really shows the ways that you can highlight some of the female entrepreneurs. So there are 12 million women owned businesses and female entrepreneurship has risen 114% in the last 20 years. Now there are a lot of reasons why that's happening and uh, kudos to every woman who is starting a business, going in it full time, building an enterprise, or even if you're just doing a side hustle and you are a part-time entrepreneur. Uh, I've, I've always said, and I say consistently, that everyone should have a side business of some sort because it is one of the ways to generate wealth. And if you are interested, I have a free course that I'll show in the show notes that you can do to develop an entrepreneur mindset. Uh, it's also on our website at businesslifeandcoffee.com. But anyway, entrepreneurship in, for women, uh, it's increased 114% over the last 20 years. There's 12 million women-owned businesses. But listen, y'all, I am not a woman entrepreneur, but I can tell you it is hard being an entrepreneur. It is literally a uphill battle. You have to develop uh, an idea you have to understand your market, you have to build a website, you have to get a domain, you have to figure out how you're going to sell your product, you have to uh, figure out how you're gonna price your product or service, you have to generate buzz, you have to um, steward your finances well, you have to pay your taxes, you have to pay employees, pay contractors, all these sorts of things make it incredibly hard to be an entrepreneur. And that's just being an entrepreneur from the start. Oh, and did I forget that you have to raise funds or you have to bring your own funds to the table if you wanna be a uh, successful entrepreneur and stay in business. And you have to constantly be learning how to improve and grow and you've got a network. So there's a whole host of reasons why it is difficult to be an entrepreneur. But when you add the layer of being a woman entrepreneur, and especially a, a woman of color entrepreneur, there are just so many different hurdles that can come your way if you choose to go the route of entrepreneurship. Now, with entrepreneurship, it's tough, but it is incredibly rewarding. It's rewarding for a few reasons. It's rewarding because you are able to bring joy to people. You're able to eliminate problems. You're able to uh, help people become profitable. There's so many uh, benefits to becoming an entrepreneur. You get to build the life of your dreams, whether that's your schedule, whether that's financially, whether that's the impact you make on the world. There's a lot of good uh, to have um, from becoming an entrepreneur. But the reality is that it is tough, it can be hard, and your circle can really help encourage you and develop you and promote you. And so I don't wanna give all of the ways that Thrive Global says you should empower female entrepreneurs because I want you to read the article, but there are a few that I do want to highlight. The first one is put your money where your mouth is. I challenge you to purchase from a woman entrepreneur, purchase a product at least once a week. It's one thing to say you support someone, uh, but it's another to support them with your financial, your ducats, with your dollars, with your with your Bitcoin, with your crypto, with your stocks, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, it's one thing to um, talk the talk. It's another to walk it. And so think about putting your money where your mouth is and buy their product. You can buy their product or service or you can give them a gift card. You can uh, give them cash or uh, cash app or Venmo or something to say, hey, put this toward your operating costs or um, here's a gift card that you can put towards uh, purchasing an equipment. Uh, for example, if they need a camera or if they need uh, a, a POS system or if they need more inventory, um, put your money where your mouth is and support women entrepreneurs. 
Another thing that you can do that is free 99 is that you can give public praise. So the article says, in today's social media and peer-reviewed world, word of mouth advertising is gold for an entrepreneur. If you love a product or a service, tell your friends and put it out there to your network. You never know when something will go viral and help propel that female entrepreneur to another level. My sales skyrocketed when Chris Jenner sung the praises of our eyelash applicator and curler. I should mention that this article was written by Conchita Leafling, who is at I Am Conchita. So, yeah, you never know when your praise can go viral. You can post on Google reviews. You can post on Yelp. You can post on Facebook. If, it, if you know a podcaster, you can leave a five star review on Apple podcast. There are so many ways. Oh, and you can email them a testimonial and say, hey, feel free to use this on my site. And I tell you why this is gold, like the author mentions. It's gold because when you look to buy a product, you are likely looking on the web page for uh, reviews. You're looking for testimonials. You're trying to figure out if this person is trustworthy and if I should buy product from them or buy their services. And so having more testimonials and reviews and support that uh, a women entrepreneur can use at their disposal helps helps drive their business. Matter of fact, I was uh, getting my wife's car fixed today and it was something small, um, pun intended, but truthfully too, it was something small. There was a, a bolt that got into the tire and so the tire needed to be patched. Thankfully, it, it didn't go flat no accidents you know we got it to the to the dealer safely uh and instead of having to pay for the patch the the person at the shop was like hey would you mind giving us a review on google and instead of having to pay you know we'll eat the cost of this repair if you could give us a review on google and you know the guy treated me great from the moment i encountered him he explained everything that I needed to know about the process. He uh, told me a time frame that it was going to be to to deliver on the service, and he actually hit that. Um, so I had nothing but good things to say about the experience. But he offered me an opportunity to take it one step further and share my experience online, and I did. And so I got the repair. He they absorbed the cost. It was only like seventeen dollars anyway. But that uh, review is going to help customers make a decision about whether or not they want to um, go to that shop. So reviews are everything. Um, if you know an entrepreneur that uh, is looking a little skimp on their uh, on their Google reviews, why don't you go ahead and give them a review, especially if it's a woman entrepreneur um, and a, a woman of color entrepreneur. So. Check out the uh, link in the show notes for the Thrive Global story on five ways to empower female entrepreneurs. And I want you to do all of these this month, especially putting your money where your mouth is. But there's some other things that you can do as well. If you are looking to be an entrepreneur that everyone is raving about and you want to not only start a business, but you want to stay in business, you need to have the appropriate mindset. And that's why I've created a course called the Entrepreneur Mindset for you to unpack the four keys to developing a healthy mindset when it comes to learning how to live the life as an entrepreneur. It's free for you to download. It's available on the Business Life & Coffee website. So that's businesslifeandcoffee.com and go check it out. You will be more inspired, more disciplined, and more encouraged about what it takes to succeed in business. Now, I've been in business for over nine years, and I've seen people come, and I've seen people go, and without fail, they have not succeeded in business because they failed to master one of these four things. And it's not so much that you have to master these things from the start. You just have to be thinking about them and they have to be top of mind. So I want you to check out the course at businesslifeandcoffee.com called The Entrepreneur Mindset. You can search for it in the search box and it'll be the first thing that pops up. So if you're looking to be an entrepreneur, if you are currently an entrepreneur and you've lost your, uh, your mojo, your drive, why not take a look at The Entrepreneur Mindset course 
at Business Life and Coffee free for a limited time. All right, let's get back into the show. Okay, this is Coffee Shop Q&A. Coffee Shop Q&A is a segment where we dive right into mentorship, either with a guest interview, a topic I've been thinking about lately that I want to share with you, or responding to your questions. If you have a question for me that you want me to take a look at, why not send me an email at jprice at jumpstart-hr.com or send me a tweet or DM at Joey V Price HR on Twitter or Instagram. This week, we are diving into a uh, HR and culture topic, and that's ways to make your team members feel valued and important. Now, um, sometimes people may look at feeling valued or important or significant, and they may deprioritize that because they feel like, oh, that's a that's a touchy feely sort of thing. And I'm a manager who doesn't really like to be so connected with my people that we get to that level. Well, I assure you that if you are leading and you're not uh, transparent and you're not making your team members valued and important, you're you're going to experience some of these negative side effects. The negative side effects that come from not making people feel important apply not just to business, but to life as well. So this is a business talk, but also one about life as well and the relationships that we have in life. One of the first negative implications that you can have by not making people feel valued or important is that they can have decreased drive, uh, whether that is decreased drive in pursuing a goal or doing their job or uh, having a relationship with you. They will not be motivated to continue uh, at a aggressive pace If you are not known for rewarding someone or making them feel valued or important. Another thing that happens if you are not making people feel valued or important is that you're going to have conflict in your culture. That's right. You'll have conflict in your culture. One of the things that is a telltale sign of people not feeling valued or important is a lack of communication. And when you have a lack of communication, that is when you are not talking to one another. And why do people not talk to one another? It's because they don't feel comfortable around you to talk. And so they don't want to share what's on their heart because they just don't feel comfortable being around you. They don't want to uh, talk to you. And a reason why they don't want to talk to you is probably because you make them feel insignificant. You don't respect them. You don't value them. And so you're going to have uh, conflict in your culture. And the last thing or negative uh, implications of the lack of um, value and importance in your team is that people will just leave. Um, There's a saying that people vote with their feet. And so that's everything from um, a restaurant that's that goes out of business because people stopped choosing to go into it to uh, people leaving your organization, leaving your team. And so people will vote with their feet. They'll find another job. They'll find another opportunity. They'll find something that um, helps them get into a position where they are valued. So. You don't want to be that leader. You don't want to be that person who ignores the the people around you and you don't establish a connection. So I wanted to just share with you a few things that you can do to make your team members feel valued and feel important. The first thing you can do is listen. Be known as a leader who listens to your team. Uh, When they're talking to you, put your phone down. Uh, When someone from my team comes in the office, I'll usually close my laptop. So I'll shut my my computer down as a way to show, hey, I'm I'm actively listening to what you have to say Uh, and just make sure that you're paying attention. Uh, I'm not going to go into active listening techniques or repeating what you heard or yada, 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 any of those things. But just just be known for being a good listener. Um, because people feel valued when they know that you uh, 
uh, have internalized what they've shared with you and they in turn are able to have a, a healthy conversation, effective conversation with you because you listen. Another thing that you can do to show people that they're valued and important is remember, remember birthdays, remember anniversaries, remember milestones in life. Remember what somebody told you they're doing over the weekend and ask them about it uh, on Monday at work or Tuesday when you get a chance to see them, you know, showing that you care enough to pay attention to people's nuances and uh, insignificant things about their day or life uh, shows that you care enough about the details in their life. So remembering things that are happening in their world is super important. The next thing you can do to make team members feel valued and important is to get to know them. Now, uh, <laughs> this can be a tricky one because uh, things can go really way left if you uh, push beyond someone's level of comfort in wanting to get to know them. But what I mean by getting to know them is understanding you know, what, what makes them tick, what motivates them, what excites them about coming to work, what are they excited about on the weekends, um, what are some of their hobbies? What are ways that they like to be rewarded? What are uh, their, their future goals in life? Get to know your team members and that will make them feel super valued and important. Also, public affirmation. Hey, whether that's an email in a group, whether that's uh, shouting someone out at a staff meeting, whether that is uh, on social media, highlighting uh, employees that are doing really well, that's a great way to show people that they're valued and important. You ever walked into a restaurant and you saw the employee of the month? Uh, I always look at those people and on the wall and then I try to see them uh, working because I know that's got to feel good to walk in every day and see that you were honored by being the quote unquote employee of the month. And the last thing you can do as a manager, as a leader, and making people feel valued and important is eliminate obstacles to their success. What happens is people feel uh, less valued and they feel insignificant when they present problems to you that you don't help them solve. Now, I believe one of the fundamental responsibilities of a manager is to remove barriers to success. And if you're not doing that, you will find that people stop coming to you with their problems because you can't help them. <laughs> and uh, it can just be bad because if they're having problems, they're not being productive. So you want to make sure that you're eliminating barriers and eliminating obstacles and challenges. What are some ways that you make people feel valued and important at work? Let me know. I'm going to post a social media graphic uh, asking this question. So I'd love to hear your comments. Let me know on social media, on IG, on Twitter, and I hope you have a really great week. Happy International Women's Month, Women's History Month, and I will see you next week.